why did the spirit chose to help you? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. What about the demons? I could sense the demons too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. Do spirits watch people like that? I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. You mean it protected you? There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. And also in your fight with Petra's demon. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance. And I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I'm glad you think traveling with me is worthy of your time. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden, and help prepare him for the task that is yet before him. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. <laughs> I'll hold you to that promise. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. I like Wynn. What's on your mind? Is there something that can cure you? Cure me? What, am I sick now? Well, in a sense... Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child, your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. You're not afraid at all? People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death if you are happy with the life you have led? If you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. Are you content? I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I for one am not afraid of death whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the Fade and returns to the Maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? Hmm. That we shall. What's on your mind? Do you have any regrets at all? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. The greatest misstep of my life, made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else.
What did you do? Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. I see how this could be trouble. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home, time to emerge from his shell, so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential, just to be difficult. And what did he think of you? Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh taskmistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed. And I learned that too late to help him. What happened to him? I just wish I had been more aware. Stopped for a moment to put myself in his shoes. Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, fourteen at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down. Uh, what was phylactery? It was some sort of a... something like a fingerprint? DNA sample? But let's, let's go with what is phylactery. The phylactery is a vial of blood taken from a mage. But blood is connected to life, and your blood can be used to track you down. They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. That was cruel of them. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes. And the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. Maybe he did find the Dalish. Actually, we're going there next. The Templars are well trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Anaren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. Oh, well, there's a brighter side, I guess. And there it is. My story. My one greatest regret. Thank you so much. You led me to an errand. You persisted, even though I was sure all you were going to find was a dead end. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Finding an Aaron allowed me to bring that chapter of my life to a close. I feel free. A great weight has been lifted off my heart. This moment, it feels like the moment before the sunrise, when all the world is still, holding its breath, waiting for first light. I can stop thinking about my past and look forward to the future. Thank you, my friend. You will always have my gratitude.